What's up guys, it's Kevin from Mathers on the Map and today is the next van build episode installing the SBAR S2, the new diesel heater from 2019 and... If you're new to the channel, I have over 20 videos on our current van build process documenting pretty much everything there is uh, and each little project along the way to get to our complete converted mobile home on wheels or tiny home on wheels. So for the SBAR S2, this is the newer version of the popular SBAR D2 diesel heater which most locations for fellow van lifers put it underneath the passenger seat, which is where we're going to put this. So some of the benefits to the new S2 are the electronics are way easier to set up. It's a little bit quieter than the old D2 S bar heater. And it's also better in high altitude. So this you don't need an additional adapter or anything like that. The kit that I bought also comes with the Easy Start Pro, which is, has a temperature sensor and it has a little LED display for uh, setting and controlling the SBAR diesel heater. All right, so here's the entire kit laid out, but there's some items that you need to buy in addition to the kit, which include this area right here. So first thing, you're going to be drilling through the floor of your van, so you're going to want to paint it with rust-oleum to prevent rust. You're going to use a hole saw to get to create those holes in the floor of your van. To get the seat off you're going to need these Torx bits which is I believe for the my van's a 2015 so you'll need a E14 bit and there's like the little star bit there. And then uh, we have some high temperature rated silicone to secure the diesel heater to the floor. We're gonna bolt it down obviously, but we want to make create that seal and we want something that is can withstand high temperatures. And then you need to tap um, your fuel line to the diesel tank's auxiliary. So that's what this adapter is here. And then we also have a universal hose to connect a big hose to a thin one. Also, I forgot to mention, here's our, our fuel line, the blue line provided by SBAR. But I, I do have some wire loom that I'm going to wrap around this just to give it a little bit more heat protection when we go over the uh, exhaust of the van and some other hot components here. Alright, so I forgot to mention that I did get some type of manuals or information from uh, SBAR. However, it's not really that helpful and a lot of this is just not in English. There is an English section but there's not really, this is just operating and maintenance instructions. So from an instruction standpoint, I did uh, get a link to a instruction PDF and I can link that to the description below. And here's one of the pages from this PDF that go into a lot more detail on what fitting goes where. So this is gonna help me identify which uh, fittings to use for the metal exhaust line versus the intake air line and um, some of the fuel lines as well. So I'm using this and then I'm also using on my phone I have the PDF pulled up here that I could just quickly scroll through to get any section that I need and currently I'm looking at this diagram right here which is a, regarded the fuel pump. So I'll provide this, the link to this PDF in the description below but I uh, just wanted to call it out. This is going to be pretty helpful when determining what fittings to use for your lines. So this is pretty much everything that you need and everything else comes with the kit. So jumping back over to the diesel heater here. So I'll quickly just put this in place. So 
if you're wondering how this works. So this is gonna be the intake to supply the heater with air. And then this right here is gonna be the fuel line, which is tapping into your diesel tank of your Sprinter van. And then, or what other, any other type of van you have, your diesel tank. And then this is the exhaust, which leads into this muffler here, and then an extension past the muffler. So for this piece right here, you don't want it to be over two meters, at least that's the recommendation from SBAR or the manufacturer. And if you want to go a little bit longer, then they advise getting a thicker diameter hose. So I'm struggling a little bit because I want this diesel heater exhaust to be on the driver's side, but I don't think I have enough line and I'm not going to get something thicker. So it's probably going to be running right outside the sliding door, pretty much like everyone who installed the SBAR D2 heater. So I forgot to mention, but this is what the pump looks like. And this pump is what pulls the diesel from your diesel tank, your, your vehicle's diesel tank, into this little opening right here and into the diesel heater. The kit also comes with a lot of different screws, uh, self-tapping screws, um, little grommets to secure your fuel lines in place, as well as hose crimps to just secure everything down. So first thing that I'm going to do here is take off the passenger seat. And again, I'm going to be using an E14 socket, uh, torque socket. I think that's what it's called to take this seat off. Just four of these little guys. All right, so that's what that looks like. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is put this inside to see, make sure I have enough room to get a gauge on how I want it. So I'm putting this lid on and then I connect the ductwork to this lid here. All right, so I got this piece on, and this is where the duct goes on, the duct work. So if I stick this on here, it'll help me determine where I want to put this. So let's say I'm putting this down here. I don't think I want to crimp it that much, but I could do something like this and have it right to there. All right, so for the van models, between the year 14, 2014 and 2018. I think they're gonna be a lot like this. So this little indication here, you have about two and three quarters inches to the frame of the van or two and a half. And these dots kind of give a mark. It actually looks like it extends a little bit further than that, but I'm gonna be drilling my holes right in this realm here. And I should be pretty good with that. So what I'm going to do is line the S-Bar S2 up and see this rubber gasket. I'm going to take that down and hold it in place. And then I have the Sharpie marker right there to determine or to mark exactly where I want to cut. So now I'm back over to my supply and tool station. And I'm going to get the measurement of the hole saw to see if that fits properly. So this is about an inch and an eighth, and that's probably the thinnest one I got. I don't have an inch. So we'll be doing an inch and an eighth, which is fine. It'll be a little bit bigger, and it'll make it just fine for a one-time cut, and I won't have to worry about making the hole too small, and then I have to cut again because that's a nightmare. Okay, so that's good. And now I'll get my drill bits and measure the size of these here. All right, so in terms of drill bit size, I have pretty much every size needed. You can get this from Harbor Freight, which is really cheap and affordable, and there's plenty of drill bits. So, so I'm actually gonna go with a 1564 drill bit, which is just a tad bigger than this. 
and definitely bigger than the fuel line. But I'm going to be adding Rust-Oleum paint and this JB Weld uh, high temp silicone. So everything will be nice and secure. Um, but I just don't want to make it too short and then I have to re-drill and cause more issues because I want to put the least amount of holes in there as possible. So this is what we're going to go with. We're going to get our drill bit and we'll start drilling the holes. I'm going to do a pilot hole first just to make sure that my measurements are accurate and then I'll cut the bigger holes. All right, so now that the seat's off, I'm gonna go underneath the vehicle to see where I think I could drop, drill my holes. I will have to move this line as well because my, I'm imagining the diesel heater is gonna fit somewhere right around here. So let's go underneath and just make sure. That wheel right there is the back left. So back passenger, driver side, driver side passenger side front so right here you can kind of make out the little crease just pulling off the gasket right now a bit make sure it's exactly where I want it so I'm putting it on a bit of an angle So I'm pretty confident that this is not going to interfere with anything below and I have plenty of room on both sides of the mark for the S bar to fit and I have plenty of room to wrap my ductwork right there. So now I'm just going to get the sharpie. So this is what it looks like. So I have plenty of space on over on the right hand side here on this side to finish the cut and get everything in place. Alright, so I got this taped up just so metal shavings don't go flying everywhere. And I'll make sure that I vacuum this up so prevent metal shavings from rusting, causing rust. Alright, so this is what it looks like after I cut all the holes in. You can see all the metal shavings, so this didn't catch everything, but it caught a good amount. I'm going to grab the vacuum, clean all this stuff out, and then we're going to paint this inside with rust oleum. All right, so we got a test fit in. It's looking good. Let's check it out from underneath. Okay, everything's in there and secured. So now we know that we can paint with Rust-Oleum. All right, now I am grabbing the Rust-Oleum paint and just painting this to ensure no rust is here. All right, so I apologize. Taylor is sanding over there and it's super loud, but I'm going to apply the, the JB Weld high temperature silicone to here now that the Rust-Oleum is dry. And then I'm going to put some on the inside as well. And then I'm going to put down our S-Bar. All right. Okay, so I just put the gasket on the S-Bar S2, and now I am going to push down on the high temperature silicone, and then I will put some silicone on the underneath, and then I'll bolt this into place. All right, that's in place. Now I'll go underneath and put some silicone on it. All right, so the heater is in place. And if you recall, there's four bolts that I have to screw down to make sure this stays in place. 
and they're right here and it is going to be a 10 millimeter socket. So I'm not sure what happened to the audio here, but this is when I'm starting to put the fuel line together and I am creating the adapter connector piece that will go into the fuel line or the fuel tank and then size that down to the hose connector that fits the blue fuel line. So I figured it'd be much easier to do this out from underneath the van rather than underneath of it. So here's this. And I have my two things here that I could tighten down. Just need to get a screwdriver. And then this will go like this. So you're going from a big to a small. Get this nice and tight. That's good. It's not going anywhere. And we'll do the same for over here. All right, that's perfect. So now let's go underneath the van, we'll plug this in, and then we'll figure out where we want to secure everything down. So now I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna connect this to our diesel tank. If you can see here, this is the back side of the driver's side. This is the driver's side door in the front. So right underneath the door here, driver's side door, is the auxiliary tap. You can see it's sticking right into the gas tank there, diesel tank. So I'm gonna take this off. At least try and figure out how to take it off. I just gotta pinch this. So there, this is off. Can you see that? So again, right on the driver's side. That's the passenger side over there. And I'm going to take mine, my piece here, and connect it on. I should hear a click. There we go. That's good. And now I could just attach this line to the fuel line and go all the way across. All right, so now I'm putting the fuel line, or the fuel pump together, and it's basically this section right here minus the electric so I have the fuel pump so I have the fuel pump I put this black uh, holder piece over it so it goes on the front side of the fuel where the fuel line the arrow is pointing that's where it goes and then you have this metal clip here that will stick into this and then this piece right here is going to go into the vehicle so I'll do this first and then I will secure this to this all right so here's the progress made so far here's my tap now I just need to cut the blue fuel line put it into the fuel pump and that's right there on about a, needs to be on a 15 to 35 degree angle and you need to make sure that your fuel is going in the right direction. So the angle up should be where the fuel is going. So there's a little fuel line. I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but it's pointing this way. And this side needs to be going up 15 to 35 degrees. To get this in place, I just did a little 90 screw here. So I screwed it into the frame of the van and then I'm bolting it down right now. And then I will be putting on my rubber hoses to connect this to the, the blue fuel line. All right, so this is where we're at now. So we have it coming out of the gas tank into the blue fuel line. We have it sized down to the smaller um, size here and then into the fuel pump. And then I'm going to be wrapping or attaching this to a rubber mount to the blue line and wrapping it in the wire loom and running it across the bottom of the van. I also am going to need to figure out a way to secure this in place so there's not as much slack. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that yet, but 
I'll figure it out. So now I'm running the line up and over underneath the, between the floor of the van and the heat shield here. And then almost there. So the fuel line is in right there and it goes all the way up and around right through here up 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 underneath the heat shield through here around here and connected so next is the two lines for the intake and the exhaust okay so your exhaust is the one that's not next to the fuel line or the same side that the uh, heating duct will come out of so mine is facing the back of the van so the one right here is the back for the exhaust all right here is the exhaust line and i have these little uh I don't know what you call them, tighteners to secure the line in place. And this is going to go attached to the S-bar heater to the floor. This will attach to the muffler. This one will attach to the muffler as well. Forgot to mention, this is using a T30 Torx wrench. And I just have a little bit that goes on to the end of this so I could put it on there and then just use the socket wrench to quickly secure it in place. This is nice and tight and it's gonna run straight over to there. Unfortunately, right in front of the side door, but it's not long enough to make it all the way across and I am not really trying to mess with the combustion um, because you can only have this no more than two meters. Okay, here is the intake hose as well. And that's the little crimp to uh, secure this on. So these, everything's really tight. Can't pull anything off. And now it's time to connect this to the muffler. And this somewhere, not sure yet. I'm gonna do the exhaust line first. So I'm just securing the muffler down. And I got my T30 Torx. Screw this into place. Or clamp this into place. Alright, that's not going anywhere. And now I need to screw the muffler to the frame. So I'm putting the muffler right here. I did just drill a hole, a pilot hole for my screw. Now I'm going to secure the bracket in place. And then I'll bolt them up and then I will bolt the muffler to the bracket. The line going down around here into the muffler and out on the outside. You can't really see it unless you're looking for it. It's right there. Now it's time to do the black intake which again we're going to use the same piece just 
right here. All right, so that's it. I gotta cut the rest off right here. All right, that's cut off. Now I'm putting this on. Voila, that's done. All right guys, so that wraps up everything that I needed to do underneath the van besides the electric so we're moving on to the electric now all right guys so now we're on to the electrical everything underneath the van is secured so we have the fuel line tapped into our diesel tank we have our exhaust running on right underneath the sliding door and we also have our intake hose for the air that will go into the s-bar heater so the electrical setup really isn't that bad. There's four main pieces that you need to focus on and it's all bundled into this main piece up here and then teed off, split off into three different strands. So this gets connected directly to the S-Bar heater, just plug and play. And then that brings us to this long one over here, which has two positive and negative leads which go directly into your fuel or into the fuel pump and there's a little adapter that you just push these things onto and it uh, then it just clips right into the fuel pump over here this one with the multicolors is for the easy pro starter and you only need this piece right here again another uh, plug and play super simple and you don't need to worry about the excess lines here. And lastly, this is our power cable. So we're just going to connect this to a fuse box that S-Bar provides. And, and then here is what you're going to connect the power lines to. So you're going to connect this, these two lines to your power. And then the ground to the brown cable right here. And then this will meet these two red cords in a little fuse box these two all right so first thing we're going to do is get this line into the fuel pump so to do that i need to lift up the floor here and run it into the driver's seat because there's a rubber boot that goes directly underneath the van i'm not sure if you saw that from a previous clip or not but it's going to come right under through there and that's exactly where we're running our fuel line so we could just run it adjacent to that Looking back, I probably wouldn't have lift up this floor here. I would have just tried to fish the wire through the white bridge that runs wires across from the passenger to the driver's seat. All right, so I gotta fish the line through this white bracket here that goes across from seat to seat. And before I'm taking the driver's seat off. I'm just pulling out this excess wire here so I don't have to unclip it. I believe if you do unclip it, you want to unplug your battery first or else you trigger a, an engine code that you won't be able to get off your dash unless you go to the dealership. So I'm going to leave this plugged in. I do have enough line, which is great. And I'm just going to put this seat right here. So I'll be okay. But just be careful if you don't. All right, so I just used the fish line. All right, I just fished it out through underneath the middle here. You might be able to take it out, but I don't want to risk it. And this is really hard to unfold. But here I got the line through the chassis or through this little bracket. So now I'm going to push this through the rubber boot straight down there. And then go underneath the vehicle and plug this into the water pump. And then I will tighten this all up and zip tie it down, make it clean and put it in there. In the electric bag here is where you'll find the piece for the water pump and it just looks something like this. And the positive and negative go into there, it doesn't matter which one. And then we'll just clip this right into the water pump. Or not the water pump, the fuel pump, sorry. All right. 
Got both pieces on there and it's pretty tight. Can't pry it off, which is great. Now I'm going to shoot this down the boot. All right, so here's the fuel pump. Here's that. And here's the rubber boot. boot. And there's a zip tie right there, so I'm just going to take some pliers. I'm just going to cut this right now, and then I'll re zip tie it. So that's cut. Open this up. Okay, got this, and now I just need to plug it into the water pump, which will go just like this. Okay, so this is good now. Alright, so one last look of everything. We have our Adapter to the fuel tank, to the big hose, to the universal adapter. I need to cut that to our small hose, to our blue fuel line going into our fuel pump, which is on a 15 degree angle. Going up. Okay. Then going out into the wire loom that's going all the way around to over the heat shield area down into the tank. All right, one last look from this side. So we have our three points of entry for the diesel heater. One, the small one here is the, fu is the fuel line. This is the intake for the air to get sucked through to get combusted and turn into heat. And then here's our exhaust. And then I have four bolts, 10 millimeter, I believe, securing the S bar to the to the van and it is surrounded in the high temperature red silicone from JB Weld and then our lines are just running down this intake line make sure that it's always going in a downward direction otherwise you need to drill holes to ensure no condensation gets built up so this is going in a downward motion the entire way so I'm going to leave this without drilling holes then here is our exhaust which go, runs into the muffler all the way down to the sliding door. Alright, so for the power and the line that goes into the Easy Pro Start, I am running that through the floor hole of the passenger seat and I'm going to run it along this wood here underneath the kitchen cabinet and then up into our battery compartment which is going to be in this upper cabinet here so there's plenty of line and instead of leaving everything right here i want to have it all into my electrical area so i'm going to use the lines they give you a lot of line here so I'm going to run this all the way before tapping into my power source. We tidied up our lines here just cleaned this one which is the power supply to the fuel pump and then I just wrapped this in a nice circle this is secured and clipped down so this is just the main source to the S-bar heater and now we can run our duct work and then plug it in and test it out. So I just ran our line through the floor here and then through and then I'll be securing this here and it goes right underneath our kitchen cabinet up to our electrical compartment there. Which is great. Alright so I secured the ductwork here and then I need to just make my hole saw cut, cut it there and then secure this in place and then we'll be ready to test. But we're going to use this, make our hole, and then paint it with Rust-Oleum and clean it up. Alright, hole saw time. Now I'm just taking a metal filer 
and following down the raw metal, and then I'll paint it with rust oleum. <laughs> All right, so the rust is now dry. So let's put this through. Nice snug fit here. So this is in place. Now I'm just gonna run our ductwork to it. All right, so I'm gonna put the fuse box together. So everything you see here comes with the kit. And basically what I'm gonna do is make these two connections with this cord right here for these two red cables. And then we're gonna stick both of these red connections, red wires into the fuse box with a 20 and a five amp fuse. So let's put this thing together. And the yellow goes on this thicker one. So the blue goes on the thin one here. And the yellow goes on the thicker one. I'd advise putting these on before you cut because it's going to be difficult to thread the copper through these little holes here. Alright, so that took care of this one. Okay, I'm gonna go to 20. All right, so we have our two little bits here. I'm gonna thread this through. All right, that's pretty good. I'll we'll move on to the other one here. All right, the big one here gave me a hard time because uh, it's just a thicker wire and it's harder to crimp, but I got it. And now I have both of these ready to go into the fuse. All right, we got the fuse block put together. So we have the five and the 20 amp fuse. And it's just simply this, the thicker cables are going into the fuse here, the 20 amp, and the thinner cables are going into five amp here. And then I can put my little lid on. There we go. All right, so everything is hooked up and ready to go, other than just tapping this onto the power line here. So let me just connect this really quick, and it's the four and the four. There's one with three, don't use the one with three, use the one with four, and just. Hear that clip, that's on. It's ready to go, and now I have my battery here. So I'm hopefully going to be able to run power to it. I just need to splice this cable and then connect the copper to the positive and the ground to the negative and we should be in business here. So here we go. Okay. Alright, so we're going to wire this to here. Okay, that's on. And then our two positives. All right, so we got our uh, power hooked up to the battery here. So now I just got it plugged in and it says control sensor. So I'm reading what that says right now. We're gonna go with the control unit. Indicator sensor, we're going to say none. All right, I just set it for on for 30 minutes and it started up. Let's go head to it over here. Let's see. Not sure if you can see that, but this thing is. Cranking out heat. Oh, yeah. 
I'm working on putting the swivel seat right now. This is getting nice and warm. So we got heat right now, it's working really well. If you don't have your electrical compartment uh, configured yet, but you want to test it out just like I'm doing, then you can just hook up your electrical to a battery and then just wire your Easy Start Pro and let it roll. It is cranking heat in here. I'm loving it right now. Woo! It's sick. It's so warm. It's not too loud either. I wouldn't mind sleeping with that, having a little bit of white noise in the background, so I'm quite pleased. It did take about like five or six times to get this running. Uh, just turning it off, turning it on, turning it off, turning it on, and I did unplug and replug the fuel line uh, just to make sure that everything worked the way it was supposed to, and now that it's cranking out heat, it's ready to go. So you might need to take a couple attempts to get enough fuel into the S-Bar so you, it can start combusting and creating that heat. So that wraps up this episode on installing the S-Bar S2D2 diesel heater. I'm super stoked. I'm not sure if you can hear the humming in the background, but I'm just going to leave it on because it feels so nice in here. It's a cold day. Now that I got the heat blasted in here, I can warm up while I clean some of this stuff up. So that wraps up installing the S-Bar S2D2, the latest model from 2019. It's actually a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. It's uh, pretty daunting at first, especially with the electrical wiring, but they did a great job simplifying it from the older version, the D2 version. And remember, this one has the high altitude sensor built in, so you don't need an adapter. It is a lot quieter. Uh, if you have any questions on installing this, drop a comment below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more Van Build episodes, then consider subscribing to our channel or drop down to the Van Build playlist in the description below. And we will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching and really, really appreciate it. Nothing's better than having heat, baby. Here we go.